Okay, in this video, we're going to find the absolute maximum and minimum values of a function over a given interval. So the interval is x greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. Our function is continuous. That's sort of something that, that we could point out that x is continuous, sine x is continuous, their sum is continuous. So the first step is we're going to find critical numbers. And critical numbers are numbers in the domain of the function. But the domain of f is equal to all real numbers. So they're numbers in the domain of the function such that the derivative of that function is equal to 0. Or the derivative of that number is... Uh, Undefined. Okay, let me just do that. I, might, I feel like I might even set it wrong. It, it's critical number is where f prime of c equals zero or f prime of c is undefined. So let's just go ahead and find the critical numbers. And I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to take the derivative. The derivative of x is one, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So the domain of f prime is also all real numbers, so there are no numbers c such that f prime of c is undefined. That, that's what makes it, that is one um, type of critical number. It's where f prime of that number is undefined and that number is in the domain. Critical number always has to be in the domain. All right, so then what we're going to do is, to, for finding the critical number, is we're going to solve f prime of x equals zero. So that's another type of critical number where the derivative is equal to zero. And essentially, that means that the function will have a horizontal tangent line at that critical number if the derivative is equal to zero. So I have one plus cosine x equals zero. Cosine x equals negative one. So apparently, when cosine x equals negative one, we have a horizontal tangent line. And um, so how will I do that? I could use the unit circle, or maybe, you have the unit circle in your head or something, so you don't need to draw it. But, um, okay. So, uh, at zero, zero, when we st st start labeling the unit circle, um, that corresponds to one zero. Pi over two. Oh, brother. Pi over 2 is up here, and that corresponds to 0, 1. Pi is negative 1, 0. And 3 halves pi equals 0, negative 1. Well, you know, it's tempting, of course, to then start explaining what the unit circle is and everything. But cosine is the first coordinate. Cosine is the first coordinate on the unit circle where you have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Okay, so you have those two coordinates. Cosine is the first coordinate, and we want the first coordinate equal to negative 1. So that tells us that, therefore, x is equal to pi. Now, in fact, it's not just x equals pi. It could be pi plus 2 pi, because if we go around the circle once again, you get pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi. Or you can go around another time around the circle, and you get pi plus 2 pi plus 2 pi, and you get 5 pi. Okay. But so there's actually an infinite number of places, if, because we're allowed to continue going around the circle, there's an infinite number of places where cosine x is equal to negative 1. However, I'm only going to look at um, the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So even though cosine of 3 pi is also equal to negative 1, we're not looking at that. All right, because it's not between 0 and 2 pi. And what this is, what's going on here then is that, so this means, so F has a horizontal tangent line at X equals pi. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plot points. So we just put points in, but which points do we plot? We plot critical numbers, which some people might call crit nums. 
even though that's maybe sort of too cute. We plot, we plot crit nums and endpoints. So what I mean by endpoints is I look at f of zero. So let me just re remind ourselves that f of x equals x plus sine x, where we're looking for x between zero and two pi. Well, I can't say that's super neat. A little bit getting hard to read there. It's just maybe like one of the most important things on it's just for teaching at least is to write neatly. Write neatly and speak clearly. Well, hmm. Okay, so f of zero is zero plus sine zero. Now sine is the second coordinate of those points on the unit circle. So, so, so sine of zero, when, when, when the angle, I'll call it theta, theta is zero, I see the y coordinate zero. So anyway, that's zero. Maybe that'll be a minimum. Okay, let's see. Now let's check out a critical number pi. So what are we doing? We are plugging in endpoints of the interval and, and critical numbers. So where would our absolute max or absolute min be? That's what we're trying to find out. I don't know if I made it clear. We're trying to find the absolute max and minimum of a function. The absolute minimum and maximum of a function could be at a critical number where the tangent line is horizontal, or it could be at an endpoint. And also a critical number could be, um, if f prime of c is undefined, it could be where you have a sharp edge, like a... Uh, yeah, corner or something. I don't know what the word is. Something sharp. F of, pi, F of pi is pi plus sine pi. This is where I might get into trouble. All right, but not quite yet. Okay, sine of pi is, is the y coordinate, so that's zero. Oh, I thought I might have to worry about evaluating this and having trouble evaluating. Or I'd have to do an approximation, but I thought maybe. All right, f of 2 pi is 2 pi plus sine of 2 pi. Well, 2 pi is, is the same place on the unit circle as 0, and sine is, is the y-coordinate, so that's 0. So it's 2 pi plus 0 equals 2 pi. All right, now what do we, what do, we do? We pl Essentially, we're plotting points, but this method allows us to limit the points that we're going to plot. We just plot endpoints and crit crit nums, endpoint, crit num, endpoint, crit num, could be a breakfast cereal, the name of a breakfast cereal, but it's not, it's a critical number. All right, and we just look to see which one is the minimum. This one is minimum, maybe I should say absolute min, and this is the maximum. Zero is the least of those three numbers, two pi is the maximum. So this method allows us to, 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 to only have to plot a few points. We don't have to plot 10,000 points. And besides, if you calculated to 10,000 points, it wouldn't get pi because pi is an irrational number. It would give some you know, decimal approximation of pi. And uh, even then, it, the maximum would just be an approximation. Okay, so let's just write this down. The absolute max, or maybe let's do the min first. Min, that's the least, like Minnie Mouse. All right, we've heard of Minnie Mouse. It, it's uh, the happiest place on earth, Disneyland. Oh, hold on. Yeah, no, that's right. The minimum, so it's like Minnie Mouse. It's the least. Sort of saying that for people who might be international students, English is a second language. All right, that's why I'm, I think if you're a native English speaker, or I think you'd get that right off. Um, Okay, so the absolute max, that's the top one, that's f of 2 pi, and that's equal to 2 pi. So, um, was there a trick to this? Did I make get the whole thing wrong? Oh my goodness, I think it's I did it right. All right, so let's highlight that. Oh, I have another idea. What we could do is double check. This is an odd problem. We go to OpenStax. OpenStax is free to the public. It's open source. It's not free like you get it and then you could sell it. You can't sell it. Um, at 2 pi, we get absolute max. 
and, and which is two pi absolute minimum, zero gives zero. All right, so open, this is from openstacks.org, which is an open source textbook. You can use it and do stuff with it, but you can't sell it, which I'm not doing here. I'm not making any money off this, except for my regular job, but not, not selling this book. Okay, that does that. Goodbye.